Gaming Bolt presents 10 Dumbest Xbox One Achievements. Achievements are a strange phenomena in gaming culture. Some of us obsess over them, others couldn't care less when they come up. But every now and again, you'll come across an achievement that'll make you think, wow, okay, that was pretty stupid. Whether it's something so insignificant or easy as to not warrant the term achievement, or something insanely tough to the point of ridiculousness, let's take a look at the 10 dumbest Xbox One achievements out there. Would you like some crumpets with that? Injustice 2. Nether Realms Injustice 2 is one of the most complete fighting games to release this year, providing a great campaign with excellent voice acting and characterization, an awesome roster of fighters, and the multiverse mode to keep players busy for hours. As you'd expect, there would be achievements related to each character, like winning a match with Wonder Woman, with the final hit dealt by a meter burn lasso of truth, or how about Supergirl beating Superman after hitting 20 Kryptonian lasers? However, perhaps the dumbest and easiest achievement to unlock is Would you like some crumpets with that? It's very simple. Just duck 10 times in a row during a single match. No, no, seriously. That's it. It's the video game equivalent of Duck Duck Goose. Achievements for watching TV and films. There was a time when Microsoft discussed achievements for viewing TV shows and films on Xbox One. It sounded kind of preposterous, but then they went and did it. What were some of the achievements? Watch a trailer, pin something to the home screen, watch an hour of TV, or an hour of movies, and so on. Granted, there are achievements for straightforward things, but it just seems weird to bestow rewards for something that isn't even game related. Trolling, Mortal Kombat X. We've established that ducking 10 times in a row during Injustice 2 is bizarre. Granted, it could afford you a tactical advantage, but why is there an achievement for it? As it turns out, Netherrealm has a history of implementing such duck-based achievements. In Mortal Kombat X, if you duck 30 times during a fatality sequence, you'll unlock an achievement called trolling. Don't get it? Well, if you duck 30 times, there's no way there will be enough time to execute the fatality. If worse comes to worst, you're faking your opponent out, but at least you get a sick achievement for doing so. And by sick, we mean dumb. Seriously 4.0, Gears of War 4. The Seriously achievement in the Gears of War series has always been the developer's way of proclaiming disbelief at the manic level of dedication from some fans. Gears of War 4's Seriously 4.0 achievement has perhaps the craziest requirements. You have to complete the campaign on insane, reach max level, and then re-up, aka prestige, a total number of 10 times in multiplayer. Now, collect all 141 ribbons, which can range from chainsawing three enemies in a row in Versus or Horde, to winning a team deathmatch round by one point. Done? Now, reach the highest possible competitive rank online. Level all your Horde characters to 10, get 5 Horde skills to level 5, and then reach level 50 on all the Horde maps. Then, maybe go outdoors and marvel at the outside world or something. It's simply insane that such an achievement could offer so little gamer score for so much effort. Oops! Oddworld, new and tasty. The annoying thing about Oddworld, especially Oddworld, new and tasty, is how the game rubs your face in your abject failure. The story is about Abe choosing to save the Motocons from being processed into meat. It's like the horror of Tim Burton meets Stone Cold Steve Austin's Rage Against the Machine as Abe sticks it to the corporate glucon. Here's the thing though, those Motocon can die. Like, easily and quickly. So, what does the game do? If you accidentally cause a Motocon to be killed by, say, falling to its death, then the game rewards you the oops achievement. Keep in mind that this achievement is worth zero gamer score. It's just there to tell you how badly you screwed up. Yeah, thanks game. Karma. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare Of the myriad of ways to kill someone in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, throwing a car door should be the most awesome. You harness the power of your exosuit, rip the door off its hinges, and then heave it at the enemy, theoretically splitting them in two, horizontally or vertically, whatever works. However, it doesn't work that way in Advanced Warfare. You rip off the car door, throw it at the enemy, and they just fall over. The impact itself is even more tame, and it doesn't help that the achievement is called Karma, with a C. How punny. We can understand using a car door as a shield like Captain America, but let's be real. There are far better and more spectacular ways to kill enemies in advanced warfare. If you're going to put in Death by Flying Car Door, at least make it look awesome so the achievement doesn't feel so stupid. Smart Food, Dead Rising 4. 
In Dead Rising 4, Frank West has the option, among various other things, to collect brain jars for the smart food achievement. It doesn't seem all that far-fetched. After all, there are zombies around, and Frank collects all kinds of things. Why would it be weird to collect brain jars, which are actually preserved Evo brains? But then you start to think about it. Why brain jars? They have no discernible use as weapons. They're not being used for some kind of cure. They're just there for Frank to collect. I mean, I can understand assassins gathering feathers in the Assassin's Creed games because there's a lore reason. But why is Frank gathering brain jars? If someone has some kind of reason, please tell us. Learner's Permit, Final Fantasy XV. There are some achievements which unlock when reaching a pivotal destination, completing a tutorial, or winning your first race of the season. And that's fine at times, since they can denote progress or kick off the journey of completing many more of the same task. In Final Fantasy XV, however, you receive an achievement called Learner's Permit for driving the Regalia. Now, in the beginning, the Regalia was stuck to the paved roads, and it was pretty limited in just how much you could drive it. There's also the fact that auto-drive could be enabled, which is something you would do for a long journey. It just feels so strange that something so rudimentary like taking one step forward or jumping would be rewarded with an achievement. Energizer, Outlast. You've probably played Red Barrel's Outlast and maintained some of your sanity in the process. The game focuses on running around an asylum with only a video camera to guide you in the dark. Can you imagine trying to play the game without ever reloading the camera's batteries? Well, the Energizer achievement expects that much. You have to finish the game on insane difficulty without reloading the batteries, which means that once your starter batteries are depleted, it's the worst setup to, and soon the darkness, since the actual setup to, and soon the darkness. It's dumb, not because it's absurdly difficult, but also because of the comical nature of it all. You're more or less stumbling your way to the finale for crying out loud. Art Connoisseur, Layers of Fear. Bloober Team is on fire with its first-person horror games, following up the compelling, if derivative, Layers of Fear with the cyberpunk neo-noir game Observer. But the developer isn't above including some rather dumb achievements in its games. Take Layers of Fear, for example, a game where you play a mad painter who's trying to complete his masterpiece. Naturally, paintings are a pretty big part of the story, but you don't stare at them for very long periods of time. So, why not throw in an achievement which rewards players for staring at paintings for an hour? You can only admire your surroundings for so long, but hey, maybe someone likes that. We're not here to judge. And that'll be about it for this one. If you guys like what we're doing at Gaming Vault, please consider subscribing to our channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.